Hey guys, welcome back to Chatting with Dee. Today I got a chance to interview artist Sabi. We spoke about her journey in the music industry as an artist and what she's up to today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Chatting with Dee is where you need to be. Hi Sabi, thank you so much for coming onto my show. How are you doing today? I am good. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on here. I'm so excited to get into our conversation. You have a wonderful journey and I'm just so pumped to just hear your life story and get into it. Let's hit it. <laughs> <laughs> so you started off in the entertainment business as a young girl following her dreams. Tell us how you got started in the business and how you got to where you are today. Okay, well, any opportunity I got to perform at school or school functions, I did. Theater, dance, talent shows. You know, by high school, I was a cheerleader and performing at every school event, uh, like singing at every school event, doing both. And college, I kept that up. I was in an acting school and while going to school full time, I booked a couple of commercials and a short film and my cousin, uh, he was my older cousin, he used to work for Motown back in the day. And I met him at my grandmother's birthday party and I never met him before. And he said, you know, whose child are you? And what do you do? And what do you want to do? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I just booked some commercials and I like to act and sing and da da da. And he said, really? So he set up an audition for me to meet with these people from Warner Brothers, Warner Chapel. And that's sort of how it all started. I rocks the beat, I rocks the beat. I'm officially a fan. Sab, how do you feel about your, your, your first uh, rehearsal, man? It's a bang. Oh, no, we already got you. Like, I've been filming the whole... Huh? I, um, I felt great. It was a lot of fun, a lot of hard work. And I love it. And I feel like Cut and roll the <laughs> The producers were called the co-stars. The girl group was called the bangs, like bangs for your hair, Ooh. but with a Z. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was me and one other girl, Ella Ann. And um, this was around the time of YouTube, just starting it to explode and uh, be in everyone's awareness. and. We put out a video, the producers, you know, helped us put together a video and we had a million views out of nowhere. And next thing you know, we're doing showcases for record labels. And so, you know, Def Jam, Warner Brothers, and, and we ended up going with Warner Brothers. And that was sort of the beginning of our thing. We performed in every club, nook and cranny in California. I'm a reject, I'm a reject, I'm a reject. I'm a reject. Just dipping, just dipping, just dipping. You said you guys have only been a group for about two months. How did y'all meet? Well, it's a funny situation. We're both in a writing team and we met and we kind of had some difficulties, but you know, we worked through it and now we're just close friends in a group together. <laughs> Matched, you know, yeah. same like the yin and yang. <laughs> What's the, um, the next goal for you girls? Our next songs. I mean, we're just gonna we're just making music and having fun, and we're putting out song after song. So, I mean, right now we're with the We Jerkin, but our next song will be coming soon. So. Open that Lamborghini, like show that you was fresh as me. We Jerkin, we Jerkin. <laughs> I love it. Six months into our record deal, we had all these shows lined up. Ella Ann was injured in a gang related incident that you know she was involved with but a man who was involved with that sort of um, trajectory and so it was very uh, intense and, and serious uh, she survived she's still around to this day
And it's super sick. Hey, mom, we left or something, but we were looking for you. Oh. Okay, like, huh? You're doing a whole rock thing. Yeah. It definitely changed the trajectory of everybody's life and, and the course of where we were going. While she was, you know, incapacitated, we had all these shows lined up. So I started rapping, singing, and dancing in these shows. And one of the shows I did was for Kiss FM. Uh, Jingle Ball um, on the side stage show. And that caught so much attention because we recorded it. We had dancers, we had a hype man. I'm rapping, I'm singing, I'm doing the whole thing. And hey. then, <laughs> <laughs> then we have, you know, two of the big pop dudes, dudes uh, checking to see, you know, is this the next pop, you know, superstar? So Red One, Dr. Luke, etc. My team decided that Dr. Luke was the best route for me to go. And so he was, at the time he had put out Kesha and Katy Perry and he was working with um, Britney Spears at the moment and put me on a record with Britney Spears. I ended up going on tour with her. <laughs> It was a it was a wild ride. I mean, I I ended up getting on a record that um, with a band called Cobra Starship that went platinum in a whole bunch of places and that opened the door to so many television performances and world travel. We put out a couple other records, one called Wild Heart, one called Where They Do That At. You That's are like the. <laughs> that is like. Okay, blown away. <laughs> so, you're like the OG in this game. Like, you have been here since the beginning, and it came from a connection within your family to be able to get to where you are today. It's so inspiring that you were also able to just take all your talents and keep pushing forward. It's just so exciting to hear your journey and really just Thank see you. where you are today. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, of yeah, I think I I still feel like the journey is um, in some ways still just beginning. So the collaboration you did with uh, Cobra Starship, you make me feel. Let me tell you, that song is still bumping to me till this day. <laughs> and it's so like when I was back when I was a little girl, um, I used to attend camp. And um, that was the anthem for our summer. So it's so great. It just shows like how music can bring us together no matter what. And so I want to know how that club, what that collaboration was like for you. And did you think that it would make an impact uh, years later? So I have a friend, a good friend, uh, Julie Pilot, and mm -hmm. she worked for Kiss FM and, and interacted with a lot of artists on a day to day basis. And Gabe Saporta of Cobra Starship um, reached out to her looking for a vocalist on the track. And apparently he wanted to work in the past when I was in the girl group, but we could never uh, make it happen. So it, this was divine timing because, yes, you know, I was gonna say that. You know I, <laughs> it was the right time because I was on this solo trajectory and, and now being groomed to do this new female pop thing. And they sent me the record, you know, and I was like, 
<laughs> I heard it for the first time, the demo of it in my first apartment with no furniture. And I remember <laughs> literally dancing to it in the place like, oh my God, this is so crazy. It's such a smash because the energy was so vibrant. The energy was so like mm -hmm. big and fun. And I immediately knew I wanted to be a part of it. But yeah, it was it was it was definitely fun, and we got to perform all over the place. That opened up international travel for me. I performed in Japan like a million times because of this record, and I got paid like money that I was like, oh my god, I didn't know you could get paid to, to like you know this much to sing a song. Like you know, it was just yeah. like it definitely um, shifted my life again. Wow. Uh, so, and I had no idea it, that it would be what it is. <laughs> It sounds like it came within divine timing, like we said before, and without any expectations. Because I feel like when you go into things with expectations, it, it never amounts to what you expect it to be. So that is so awesome that you were able to connect with them like that and just feel free and do your own thing and them do their own thing. And now years later, it's still a hit. So that is awesome. I know, <laughs> I still hear it. It's so weird to like go into the grocery <laughs> store and hear it. You decided to stand in your power once you felt your voice wasn't being heard. What was that process like for you? I, I imagine it was hard. Yeah, it was definitely intimidating to say, to speak up for myself in any capacity in that state because I was young and I had not had that experience in dealing with, um, <clears throat> you know, confidently speaking my truth. And I, I wasn't, uh, in a situation where my management was able to execute in the way that I needed them to. In some cases, the management I had had invested interest or vested interest in, in, in the label's desires and needs or the producer's desire and needs. So I realized at a certain point I had to advocate for myself yeah. um, in my scenario. And it yeah. was it was a debate. I mean, I, I literally had to have a conference call with about seven men or so and argue and fight for why I wanted those records to be on there and what they meant to me and how, who I was and how I saw myself. And, um, you know, we went back and forth, back and forth, and we I still had to compromise. I still had to take half of the records that they thought should be on there, maybe be because, you know, financially they already paid for them. And then okay. half of the records that I wanted. And I still had to agree to perform in a music video for a single that they felt should be the next single. And, you know, it was a very uh, interesting time. It's one of those times where I felt still like I had no control really over mm -hmm. anything. And um, I, I'm yeah. glad that I, I definitely fought for what I was able to get. Um, but the ultimate thing was just saying like, I need to go my own way. Yeah. And, and I admire you for that, being a woman and standing up to all these executives, men at that and being young and just knowing that like you want your truth to be told and you want your voice to be heard and you don't want people to dictate what direction you're going within your career, that's really admirable. And it's, it, you took your power back and that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that is just, that's amazing. And also at a time when artists weren't doing things like that, they were just going with what the label had to say and that, that's what it was. So that's amazing. Now you have a clothing line called Original Source. What was the inspiration behind that? I went somewhere and I, I think it was in Limerick Park, which is a place in LA that I went to mm -hmm. a lot to help ground myself. It's a place that's very cultural. And um, I saw this man who he carved art into leather, like full on art, like 
drawings of like Nefertiti, yeah, in the back of wow. a leather jacket. And I was like, oh, this is incredible. And I was like, <laughs> I want to put my art on clothes. And so that's yeah. where that sort of inspiration came from. And so right yeah. now I'm doing t-shirts and, and hoodies and I just put my artwork on there and all the art is inspired by, you know, nature and mm -hmm. um, indigenous cultures. Um, and then, and the, I guess the inspiration from the indigenous cultures and the art that those indigenous cultures used to do, I, you know, they're, they're original people and that's why the name original source came from because I feel like a lot of my inspiration comes from them, so. Wow, that's deep. I like that. I like that it has that deep meaning behind it because it, it, adds, it adds value to the product. And I think your designs are super dope. So I wish you the best in, in all of that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So now you have your own show on Apple Music Radio called Easy Hits with Sabi. What can one expect when they tune in? Easy Hits on Apple Music with me is all, all about a feeling. And the feeling is feeling good, feeling relaxed, mm -hmm. feeling at ease. And so all the music selections follow that feel. They're records that you already know and love, like just records that you may have you might have heard growing up or records mm -hmm. you know like artists like aretha franklin mm -hmm. earth one and fire janet Ooh, jackson yes. shaw yes. day yes. Uh, yes. with mac <laughs> <laughs> phil collins it's just it's just mm -hmm. a lot of like those classic feeling sounding records gloria stefan mm -hmm. and it, it all just feels good yeah it's just all it's nice mm -hmm. and easy. That's what it's yeah. called. And it's Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. 7 a.m. PST. Um, we're global. So wherever you are in the world, you know, mm -hmm. it'll be on at the same time. So 7 a.m. Yeah. here is like 10 a.m. Central Time, which is, you know, it just it goes on from there and there. So. That is amazing. You are international and killing it on that radio show. I will definitely be tuning in. And I like how you take it from the educational point of it and taking it from back in the day of music to see where music is also now today because you can appreciate the music from back in the day and um, really just live in that. So that is awesome. I like that. So what is next for you? What are new any new projects that are coming up? Can you give us the little... 411. Well, continuing my thing at Easy Hits with Apple mm -hmm. Music, always trying to develop new shows. Uh -huh. And um, and then I'm, I'm gearing up to release another song um, about love. <laughs> it's That's called exciting. If Love Is Dead. Yeah. And uh -huh. so, you know, I get to just release music whenever I feel like it. There's no pressure. Mm -hmm. There's no structure. No it's just like, here's what I felt. And yeah. now it's here. Yeah, so I'll be dropping music here and there, and I'll be, you know, continuously making new designs for original source. There are some other things in the works. What up? This is Sabi from Issa. I had a great time with production. This is my first film. So check out some of my scenes. <laughs> totally cut your line off. I was like, yeah. So. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I'm excited to see all the new products you have coming up. And I'll definitely be tuning in to um, Easy Hits with Sabi. <laughs> thank you. What advice can you give to someone trying to make it in the entertainment business as an artist? You are really the master of your own ship. And right now, content is king. So identifying that special thing, that thing that makes you you, that thing that makes you unique and blocking out all the stuff of like, oh, this is what everybody's doing. This is what everyone is into. Identify that thing that is you. Own it, honor it, stick to it, and just create based off of that endlessly. Right now, you can. there's so many ways to reach people. You can just create forever, develop yourself, develop your own fan base and you know people come to you when you are already moving and in the mix and you're already showing that you are putting in the work yourself to figure it out 
So figure out who you are, honor who you are, show who you are, and continue to move forward until everyone sees the picture and wants to help. Yes, 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 yes. A thousand times <laughs> over. Thank you so much for coming on to my show. It has been such a pleasure interviewing you and getting to talk about your journey. And thank you just for being so open and vulnerable about your experiences. Like you are a powerhouse. Keep killing it. And, you know, you have support from us on this side. So thank you again. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. It was my pleasure. Yay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>